Welcome back. What we're going to do in this video is add the stitching to the shoe. So I'll go back here to our original shoe and we're looking at adding stitching inside that panel along the edge of the toe cap and on the inside of the counter. I'm also going to add the holes for the shoelaces and the shoelaces as well as just tidy up that quarter and get it to look a little bit more three-dimensional. Let's start off with tidying up the quarter and making it look more three-dimensional. I've got my direct selection selected. Over here what I do is I just click once onto the yellow panel to highlight the anchor points. As we've said before, an inactive anchor point is white and an active anchor point is filled in. So I'll just move that up a little, move that up a little and I'll just adjust the handle to make it a little smoother and I'll move that up a little. Do you see when I touch the anchor point over here, because it's a corner, a little widget comes up. This is called a corner widget. When I rest my mouse on it, it puts a curve in. If I drag back on that curve, can you see how it's actually rounding that edge? So that's giving us quite a nice finish over there. Now I'm ready to go ahead and do my stitching. The first thing that I'll select is the counter and hold shift and I'll select the quarter. These two I'm going to go into object, path, offset path and here what offset path does is it copies the shape inside the other shape with whatever amount your offset is. Because I wanted to copy it inside I have to go minus 0.8 tab and I have minus 0.8 millimeters. Watch what happens when I go to preview immediately it puts that shape inside. If I were, for example, to go 10 millimeters tab and I won't go negative, can you see how it puts the shape on the outside? So this is how offset path works. Minus 0.8 and we have an even amount of space on the inside of that panel. I'll go OK and immediately I will remove the fill. And I'm just going to prepare this so that it's ready when I've got my stitching. I'll change the color to deep orange and I'll get this one ready as well. So with my direct selection, I click onto that path, select the anchor point. Here I go edit, copy, edit, paste in front, but I'll use the keyboard shortcuts for that. Command or control C, command or control F for front. So what that did was it copied that line in front. I'll go back to my selection tool. I want that line to move 0.8 of a millimeter in. So I'm going to go to preferences, command, control, K, and I'm going to make that 0.8 tab and OK. And now I can move that in a little bit. I want to copy the properties of this line. I go to my eyedropper tool rest it on the line I want to copy and back to selection. So with my stitching, as you are well aware of, the counter stitching is on this side of the counter because it's stitching it onto the quarter and the quarter stitching will go all the way along the top and around here but not down at the bottom. With my direct selection I will select an anchor point and if I hold shift I can select more than one anchor points and then I'll just hit the delete button. Same over here, anchor point, shift and actually I'm going to go all the way up to the top here because what I have to do now is lengthen some of these lines. I'll zoom in here. To lengthen the lines I find it easier just to go to the pen tool, rest my mouse on the line and just add a little bit of a line segment there. I'm using my wheel or just coming down with my mouse over here. Do you see how the pen tool is still selected so there's still that long line? I need to deselect that with my keyboard shortcut and go back to my pen tool. The keyboard shortcut is P for that. Forward slash says that I'm joined onto that line and then back to selection. I'll do the same while I'm down here. Pen tool or P, V and I'll just finish this over here and I'm just going to drag. So what I'm dragging is just a little bit of a handle to make sure that it's a smooth join. 
and selection tool. Now that I've done that, I'm going to create the holes for my eyelets. So I come to the shape tool, so rectangle and ellipse tool. Here I'm going to draw an ellipse and I'm going to change that to black. I might put a fill in that just to make it easier to see. And we'll zoom in here. Alt copies that. So I'm going to drag that down to about there. Now there's a really nice way to make sure that your holes are evenly placed. They sit nicely and follow on from each other. That tool is called the Blend Tool. So there it is. Keyboard shortcut is W. If I double click on the Blend Tool, I'll bring up the options for that. Double click and here the options are. I would like to use specified steps and what I want is to have two holes between those holes. Preview won't work because I've got nothing selected. So over here I go to and OK. So this is my Blend Tool symbol. If I rest it on my first hole, like the Pen Tool, when it starts something it's got a little star next to it or an asterisk and I click and when I go to my next hole you'll see there's a little plus sign and when I click it brings up two extra holes. So I would like to expand this selection because at the moment it's what we call an object and what I want to do is I want to use these holes so I want to cut the holes out from the quarter. So I need to make them editable. If I come into Object and Expand, an option box comes up. I want to only expand the object. I don't want to expand anything else. OK. So you'll see that they're now grouped. I'm going to pick up the quarter only. So I'll zoom out, Command minus. So I've only got my quarter selected. And here I'm going to have a look at some more of these Pathfinder options. So the one that I'm looking for is Exclude. If I select Exclude, did you see what happened over there? It's actually cut the holes out. So at this point, if you want to, we can draw the tongue behind that shape. So I've gone to my Pen Tool. I'll change the colour of the vamp back to yellow. I'll take this tongue, arrange and centre back. From here I'm going to add my shoelaces. What I have lost is my stitching which is just because we, we cut the holes out it brought that whole shape to the front but I know if I go to my selection tool my stitching is still there. I can see from there I select that, arrange, bring to front. So let's do some shoelaces. I might use the line segment because that draws some nice straight lines and we don't need to worry about getting out of the pen tool and again I'll just do two lines. Actually I'll do these two lines. So I'll just do the second eyelet and the last eyelet. With my selection tool I'll select both of those. I'll make that another colour, I'll make that purple. And I'm going to make that shape a little bit bigger. So in the stroke I'm going to show options and I'm going to make the shoelace shape about four points and I'm going to put a round cap on that. And zooming in here I'm going to give that a little bit of shaping. So with my anchor point tool I'll shape that lace, bring it a little closer and I'm happy with that. I'm going to go back here to my blend tool, double click. I'll make that one and there it is. Have a look what happens if I just shape that, how it blends between the two shapes. I don't need to do that and I'm going to finish this off by doing my shoelace over here. This I'll need my pen tool for. So if I click in there and come back here. So it's just copied the size of the line over there. With my selection tool I'll select those lines first and I'm going to come into Object. Here I'm going to expand and last time you remember I expanded Object only. This time I'm going to expand Object and Stroke and hopefully, no it hasn't done it. 
I was hoping that it would turn those strokes into shapes, but never mind, they're still strokes. We'll hold shift and select the shoelace over there, come back to object, expand, and here we'll just expand the stroke. And if you were watching over here, what happened, so I've gone control Z, when I went object expand, and I only expanded the stroke and went OK, watch how the fill and stroke swap around. So what's happened is that stroke has become a shape now. Let's put an outline on that shape and we'll make that outline 0.5. That concludes this video. We've covered a lot of ground in this video, from offsetting the path for the stitch lines to using the blend tool to create the shoelaces and the eyelets in the shoes. Have another go at this on your own. And going forward, we'll look at creating a brush stroke to do the stitching over here and creating the end of the shoelace. Mm -hmm.